Here we're going to be introducing the concept of acids and bases in chemistry. And we're going to find out that acids and bases are one of the more important topics that we're going to be covering in general chemistry. So we're going to define what is an acid and what is a base, and then we need to understand uh, what is the difference between strong and weak acids and bases. So this is just a basic introduction, and later on in um, a subsequent chapter, we will go into the actual chemistry of acids and bases in, in much more depth. There, we're going to find out that there's a few different ways that we can define acids and bases, but we're going to start off here with the simplest definition. And the simplest definition of an acid is uh, something that produces H plus or a hydrogen ion when it is placed in, into an aqueous solution. So for strong acids, strong acids are almost completely ionized in water. By that it means if I put HCl, which is a strong acid, if I put it into an aqueous solution, I put it into water, it's going to disassociate uh, almost completely into its ions, H plus and Cl minus. And because it disassociates into ions, strong acids are considered a strong electrolyte. So when we say strong, it means that this reaction is uh, far to the right. The reaction is on the right-hand side. And so if I put HCl into solution, there will be very, very little actual HCl present. Um, all of it, or virtually all of it, is going to be disassociated into its ion H plus and Cl minus. And so this is going to come into play later on when we start calculating pHs, which has to do with the concentration of the, the hydrogen ion in solution. There are some ways of being able to look at a specific acid and say, is it strong or is it weak? Uh, we will go into that later on, but just for right now, you want to kind of memorize uh, what are the common strong acids, and you're going to see these all the time, and it's actually an important idea that you need to be able to uh, look when you're in a lab to be able to look at something and know that it is a strong acid and so it is something uh, to be taken care of. Um, here is a list of the uh, common acids. I would suggest that you make flashcards of them so you can identify them. And one of the reasons why is that the, the chemistry, how we deal with calculations that involve strong acids, is going to be much different than how we deal with weak acids. So later on when we start looking at the actual chemistry, one of the first questions is going to be, is our acid a strong acid or is our acid a weak acid? So it's up to you to be able to make that determination. So here is a list of common uh, strong acids. And a weak acid, kind of on the other side, it means that it incompletely ionizes in water. So here HF is a weak acid. When I put it into water, um, it means very little of it disassociates. So by saying that it is weak, it means that this reaction is very far to the left or to the left-hand side. Overall, when we say weak, what we really mean is that there is very little H plus um, or F minus present in solution. So if I put HF into solution, uh, only small amounts of H plus and F minus will be uh, in the solution and most of the HF will remain as HF in, in solution. So this is just uh, part of the definition, and we're going to use this for uh, looking at uh, reactions. But this idea of the uh, complete ionization of strong acids and the incomplete ionization of weak acids is going to be very important when we start um, doing chemistry with them. So the same idea, you need to just know uh, common weak acids, and here's a, a list of three of them. So whoever's uh, teaching the course that you're taking might have a larger list of um, strong acids and weak acids, but um, these are the kind of the, the major ones and the, the ones that you really need to know. So when we do uh, look at some of the reactions um, involving acids and bases, which we're going to be doing later on in this chapter, that's going to be one of the questions that you need to be able to answer. Is this a strong acid or a weak acid? So the same thing uh, goes for bases. The simplest definition of a base is a substance that produces OH minus ions uh, in water. So we're going to find that there's two different ways that we can make uh, hydroxide or OH minus ions in water. Uh, the first one is this simple disassociation. So if for a strong base, um, typically these are going to be hydroxides, and they're going to be group one metals 
or a certain group two metals of hydroxide. So here with a strong um, base, you actually see the hydroxide in the strong base. And it makes sense that if you put it into um, water, it's going to disassociate and, and form hydroxide as one of its ions um, during the disassociation. So remember group one is the column all the way to the left in uh, the periodic table. And um, there is a few other ones, uh, almost exclusively when we use uh, uh, strong bases in this form, it's going to be sodium hydroxide like uh, we have here, or potassium hydroxide. But th there are a few other ones. And just like the idea of a strong acid, strong bases disassociate completely when we put it into solution. And uh, because of that, they are strong electrolytes. So if I take, uh, say, uh, sodium hydroxide or here barium uh, hydroxide and I put it into water and make an aqueous solution, um, almost all of it is going to disassociate and, and, and form the ions. So both of these reactions lie on the right-hand side. Um, if I was to say put sodium hydroxide into water, very little sodium hydroxide would remain. It would virtually all disassociate to make the ions in solution, the Na plus and the OH minus. So with strong bases, it's uh, pretty easy to see that um, you see the hydroxide as part of it. Where it gets a little bit trickier is when we look at weak bases now. And when you look at a weak base, you don't see the hydroxide in there. Uh, what happens in this case is we um, make hydroxide by reacting the weak base with water. So that is going to make things a little bit trickier. So here is a list of some of the common uh, weak bases, um, and then you're going to notice that uh, uh, these weak bases are often a weak acid without the hydrogen attached to it, and so we will talk about that relationship later on. Um, these are weak bases, and other than ammonia right here, these weak bases are negatively charged, and the idea is you can't just have something be negatively charged, so you're going to see these weak bases um, associated with some kind of positively charged counter ion. So I have to have something positively charged uh, along with it. And this is typically going to be a group one metal. So like sodium or potassium or lithium is going to be put in conjunction with our negatively charged weak bases. So this is one of the tricky points here. When I talk about a weak base, the weak base is actually this negatively charged species. This is the thing that's going to react with water. And it's really common to call these salts here weak bases. But remember, um, the lithium, the potassium, the sodium is, has nothing to do with it. It's just a positively charged um, um, counter ion, and it's going to disassociate. So remember, it is these negatively charged species that are actually going to do the reaction. So how do you um, make hydroxide? Um, by reacting with water? Well, you got to remember water is really H plus plus OH minus. And during these reactions, what the weak base does is it removes an H plus from water. So it grabs onto the H plus and in doing that, it produces OH minus. So we've made OH minus or hydroxide by reaction with water. So there are two major types of uh, weak bases. There's really ammonia, and we're going to find out there's some other variations of these, but they're uh, very uh, similar to this. So it's a neutral weak base. And then there are weak bases with a negative charge. And they both, um, they kind of do the same thing, but their chemistry looks a little bit different. And it's important to, to understand that they kind of do the same thing, but they uh, look a little bit different. So with ammonia, it's neutral. So when it grabs onto an H plus from water, it forms ammonium, um, so it goes from neutral to positive uh, to a positive charge, and in doing that, it produces hydroxide. And F minus is already negatively charged, so when it grabs onto the H plus, it becomes HF. Uh, so it goes from negatively charged to neutral, and in doing that, it produces hydroxide. So when we say now that it is a weak base, it means in in both cases that uh, these reactions lie very far to the left. So if I was to put ammonium, ammonia in water, very little of it would we react with water to form ammonium. That's what we mean by a weak base. 
So when we make an aqueous solution of a weak base, um, very small amounts of hydroxide are, are going to be made, and that's what we mean by uh, the term weak base.